Hi there, we're so delighted to introduce to you our free church app. Uh, this app is loaded with features and resources that will greatly enrich your life. So head out to the app or Google Play stores, search for All People's Church Bangalore and download the app right now. It's going to greatly enrich your journey with God. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the makers and maintainers of peace, for they will be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for doing that which is morally right, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you and persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil things against you because of me. Be glad and exceedingly joyful, for your reward in heaven is great.
Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. Uh, we are so delighted to be able to come your way and spend this time with you in the Word of God. Uh, thank you for joining us and uh, giving us this opportunity uh, to also pray with you and uh, spend this time in God's Word. We are looking at what commonly is known as Beatitudes, uh, which is part of the Sermon on the Mount, which the Lord Jesus delivered to a great crowd of people. He talked about nine attitudes of the heart, uh, which he called as blessed, blessed by God and blessed before God, meaning God looks at each of these heart attitudes with a very favorable way. He delights when we have these heart attitudes, when we walk with these attitudes. Now, uh, I believe that it's not uh, Jesus is not giving us nine of these and says and saying, pick one of these and that's great. But I believe he's, he's presenting nine of these. And these are not separate, isolated attitudes, but these are all intended for us. Uh, he intends for us to walk in all of these attitudes. That is, our heart is postured before God in this manner. Uh, and, and, and he uses these nine different attitudes attitudes to describe a posturing of our heart before God, which God delights in, which God says is blessed. And when we posture ourselves in our heart attitudes before God this way, it then opens up, opens our lives up to the various blessings that Jesus uh, mentions in each of these nine heart attitudes. So we are taking time just to examine each one and try to understand them a little bit on how we are supposed to walk with that kind of a heart attitude here on earth. And it's something we're supposed to always maintain before God. We looked at the first three. We talked about uh, being uh, poor in spirit. We talked about being broken in spirit or mourning before God, uh, in, in our spirit. And we talked about being gentle in spirit or walking with a spirit of meekness. So we pick up now with the fourth heart attitude that Jesus talks about in this uh, uh, series of, of Beatitudes, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, and I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, Jesus said, Blessed, that is joyful, nourished by God's goodness, are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who actively seek right standing with God, for they will be completely satisfied. So Jesus is talking about a heart attitude of hungering and thirsting. A heart attitude that has a deep craving, a deep longing. He says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for what is right in the eyes of God. For that right standing, for things that are acceptable uh, before God. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for this, he said because they will be satisfied. They will be completely satisfied. So, a heart that is hungry, a heart that is longing, desiring intensely, as opposed to a, just a casual desire. And, 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 and so he's, the contrast here is this. If I have just a casual desire, maybe just a liking or you know, if it happens, it happens, and if it doesn't, that's okay. Uh, that, he's not guaranteeing that that kind of a hard attitude or approach is going to in any way experience anything. When we pursue our spiritual things, when we pursue things that are promised to us by God, this is the way in which we must pursue them. We must hunger and thirst. That means we must have an intense longing or as in the, we see in the Old Testament, very often the psalmist talks about, he draws a comparison. Uh, he, with, for example, he says, As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul, or so longs my soul for you, O God. In other words, my cry for you, O God, is one of desperation. Just like the deer that just escaped a chase from a predator and is now so desperate for water. With that intensity, with that desperation, 
uh, that describes my intensity and desperation for you, O oh God, is what the psalmist is saying. He's saying, Lord, I long for you. My flesh cries out for you. That's the longing. And Jesus says, if you have that kind of a hunger and thirst, you will be completely satisfied. So God is looking for holy desperation. God is looking for this kind of a pull, if you will, uh, on, on who he is and what he's promised us arising from our hearts. And God has promised he will respond to that kind of desperation. He will respond to that kind of hunger and thirst. You know, when you look back at church history and you read the lives and the stories of great men and women of God uh, who've done things of significance for God on the earth, there is one common denominator in, in, uh, in almost all of their lives and it is a great desperation for God, which compelled them into times and seasons of intense seeking for God. They set themselves apart. They longed for God. Uh, they uh, came away from uh, you know, the, the pressures and the busyness of this world in order to, to pursue God. And then they saw God coming through for them and through them. They were completely satisfied. And I believe that you and I in our day, in our time, we can do that too. We can, we can also hunger and thirst for righteousness, for things that God approves of, for the things that God is making available to us. That when we have this hunger and thirst, God says, I will completely satisfy that. I will respond to that. I will move on your behalf. I will come through for you. And when God responds, there is no comparison with what the world can afford us, you, you and I will realize that our longing, our hungering for God, our thirsting for God, and for the things of God was well worth it because God himself is going to respond to that and meet that cry of our hearts. So we need to walk with this hard attitude of always hungering, always thirsting. It's, it's, it's a kind of an interesting situation because on the one hand, God always satisfies us and even as he pours into us, we cry out for more. We are full, and yet we are hungry. We are satisfied, and yet we're longing for more. It's a, an interesting dichotomy, an interesting state to be in, where we know God has satisfied us, but we want some more. We know God has given us what we're longing for, and we've tasted and seen that the Lord is good, but we want more. And that hunger and thirst must never leave our hearts. And that is what God response to. And he says, that's a blessed heart condition to have. The next heart attitude or beatitude that Jesus talks about in Matthew chapter 5, verse 7, he says, blessed, content, sheltered by God's promises are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. So he's talking about a merciful spirit, a heart attitude, an attitude of mercy towards people. Mercy, of course, is something we extend to others. He says, blessed are the merciful, for they will themselves will receive mercy. Now, in practical ways, how do we be merciful? How do we have a heart, a spirit of mercy towards people around us? It means this, that we walk with a heart that is kind and in a heart that is forgiving a heart that is willing to let go, a heart that does not keep an account of the wrong others have done to us, a heart that is willing to give others a clean slate over and over again. That's extending mercy to people. A heart that doesn't look at people based on their past or the mistakes that they have done in the past, but a heart that looks at people for who they are today and what they could become in the future. That's mercy. And Jesus said, blessed are these people. Blessed are those who have a heart of mercy towards others because they themselves position now themselves now to receive mercy from God. There was a time that one of Jesus' disciples, Peter, he came to the Lord and he said, Lord, you know, how often should I forgive my brother? Uh, is it okay if I forgive seven times? You know, so Peter was just thinking very logically. He says, you know, maybe there was another disciple in the band who was troubling him a lot. And so he was saying, man, how often should I keep forgiving him and letting go of things? Maybe seven is a good number. 
But Jesus responds in Matthew, this 18th chapter, verse 22. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Now, when Jesus said that, he wasn't expecting Peter to do a mathematical calculation and arrive at a number and say, okay, I'm keeping count. No, that's what, that was not the point. The point was, you just keep forgiving. You just keep letting go. And right after Jesus mentioned that to Peter, he goes on to narrate a story. He says, you know, there was a very wealthy man, and he had a servant who owed him a huge sum of money. And that man, that servant, was unable to pay back. And so the servant comes and begs for mercy, says, you know, uh, please uh, have mercy on me. So the rich man decides to cancel the entire debt. And he says, okay, I know you can't afford to pay this. I'm canceling your debt. I'm giving you mercy. I'm extending mercy to you. Now that same worker that he had, who, to whom he had showed mercy, that man at his house had a servant who was working for him. That servant owed him a small sum of money, just a little bit of money. Now, when this man goes back to his house and he has to deal with his servant, he treats him so hard and he demands that the little amount of money he owes him had to be paid. And he's very harsh and very rude with that man. Now, when the master hears about this, he calls his servant back to him and he says, Hey, I was merciful to you for a huge amount. Why could you not show mercy to your servant who owed you just a small sum of money? And Jesus narrates this and he closes the story off in Matthew 18 verse 33. He says, should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? So Jesus is giving us uh, an illustration to uh, to. Uh, to tell us how much mercy, how much forgiveness, how much uh, kindness we must show others. He says, in as much as you have received, to that extent you, extend, you give. And all of us have are recipients of God's unlimited mercy towards us. All of us are where we are today because of the mercy of God. That means God, out of His mercy, forgave us the wrong we've done, and he continues to forgive us. Like uh, Jeremiah puts there in, in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23, he says, It is through the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. His compassions, they never fail. They are new every morning. In other words, hey, if it wasn't for God's mercy, we wouldn't be alive. If it wasn't for God's mercy, we wouldn't be where we are today. If it wasn't for God's mercy, our lives would be ruined. We would be consumed. But thank God for His mercy. You know, one of the things, great things about mercy is this, that because of the mercy of God upon our lives, we are not receiving what we really deserve. You know, the Bible says, whatever we sow, we will reap. You know, this is in Galatians, the sixth chapter, verse seven and eight. It says, you know, don't, don't, be, don't fool yourselves. Whatever you sow, that's what you're going to read. Now, for many of us, we've sown so much wrong that if we were literally to reap of all the wrong we've sown, our lives will be totally devastated. But it's the mercy of God that lessens the outcome of the wrong we've sown. And he says, in my mercy, I'm forgiving your sins. In my mercy, I am protecting your life from being consumed by the things that you would have had to reap because of what you've sown. It's the mercy of God. And so Jesus is saying, blessed are the merciful. Now, if you extend that kind of mercy to other people, he says, you will receive more mercy. You will position yourself to receive the mercy of God. So walk with a heart of mercy towards other people. Now, that doesn't mean that we you know, we don't hold people accountable. Of course you hold people accountable. But in as much as you do that, you also extend mercy. And Jesus says, if you walk with that kind of a heart, a heart that is merciful, a spirit that is merciful, you will experience more and more and more of the mercy of God on your life. You will experience God's compassions on your life. Let's look at one more before we close. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8, Jesus said, 
blessed, anticipating God's presence, spiritually mature, are the pure in heart, those with integrity, moral courage, and godly character, for they will see God. Matthew 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart. They will see God. The purity of our heart. Keeping our heart free from guile, from uh, things that are wrong, wrong motives, wrong intentions. Blessed are the pure in heart. Keep your heart sincere, clean, pure. Why? You will see God. You will have greater revelation of who God is. The purity of our heart affects our revelation of God, of what we see, of who God is, and uh, uh, of, of, of uh, what we can know and understand about God is affected by the purity of our heart. So this is something that we need to constantly go before God and say, God, purify my heart. But if we are not careful, wrong things that can creep in. Hatred can come in. Jealousy can come in. Pride can come in. Lust or desire for the wrong things can come in. All this, these things can creep into our heart because we are in a world where all kinds of things are going on around us. So we need to constantly keep our hearts pure. That means keep it free from all of these wrong attitudes, motivations, intentions, and desires. Keep your heart pure. Because then, he says, you will see God. Your revelation of God, your understanding of God, your window to God is going to be opened. And you're going to see Him for more and more of who He is. That doesn't mean we're going to understand everything about God because God Himself is so infinite. God is unlimited. But you're going to keep on increasing uh, in your revelation of God. You're able to see, know understand, comprehend, and experience God more and more for who He is. It's been our privilege to be able to bring God's Word to you through these telecasts on television. Uh, in addition to the uh, television programming, All People's Church uh, reaches out across our land through free publications where thousands of books are given out, especially to pastors and people and remote areas and towns where they do not have access uh, to Christian bookstores. Uh, we also hold uh, Christian leaders conferences and youth conferences uh, for people who do not uh, have access to these uh, teachings. Uh, we also conduct short-term Bible colleges in different parts of the country, training and equipping uh, people for uh, ministry and work of God's kingdom. For all of these, of course, we need money and uh, therefore we would like to just open up this invitation to you if you would like to partner with us either in our television programs, our publications, our conferences, our training and equipping of pastors and leaders and also in church planting in areas across this land. Feel free to do as the Lord leads and to contribute financially towards the work that all people's church is doing across India. On the program today, we've covered three hard attitudes that Jesus talked about and which he referred to as blessed attitudes. We talked about a hungry spirit, a heart that is hungry. We talked about a heart that is merciful, a merciful spirit. And we talked about a heart that is pure, a heart that is void of any evil in it, a pure spirit. And you and I need to pray and ask the Lord, God, you create such a heart in us. Create a heart that is hungry. Create a heart that is pure. Create a heart that is merciful, God, uh, before you, so that we can maintain these hard attitudes before God. Let's pray together. Father, we just pray that you will create these hard conditions in us, O oh Father. Create, Lord, a hungry spirit, a hungry heart. Create a merciful heart, a merciful spirit. And create, O oh God, a heart that, uh, uh, that is pure, uh, that is clean, that is morally upright before you. And we pray we'll receive these blessings that you promised, God. That those who hunger and thirst will be filled. That those, O oh God, who are pure will see you, will know you, will experience more of you. That those who are merciful experience mercy. 
God, we pray you'll usher us, lead us into these blessings upon our lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. I have a calling to be salt and light. I'm part of a family that empowers me to fulfill this commission. I have a job, but then I was always passionate to study the word. We are students from different walks of life. My potential is best tapped in an environment like this. Where I get the opportunity to reach out and to minister. A culture where there's supernatural impartation through anointed leaders. I can now aim for excellence because that is God's beautiful design. I am equipped to impact, come, discover, fulfill. The ABC Bible College offers a two-year diploma course in English and short-term courses in other regional languages. For inquiries about the course and other details, please do get in touch with us on our toll-free number, mobile number or landline number. You can also email us at contact at abcwo.org. You can download the application form from our website abcwo.org slash Bible College.